Hello, I'm Scott DuPont with another episode of Finance Your Movie, sharing tips and strategies to help you fund your independent feature, documentary, short film, or web series. Our mission is to empower you to get your money to tell your story. Hello, everyone. I'm here with award-winning producer, writer, actor, Howard Nash, originally from New York, and a very prolific producer. And uh, two of his more recent films I'm dying to see. They're on my list. One is called Tiger, um, starring Mickey Rourke. And the other is a documentary called John Legazamo's Road to Broadway. So uh, welcome, Howard. Well, thank you. So um, let's... Let's get started for the here. audience. I always Thanks, like sir. to ask this question. How did you get started in this crazy business? Well, there, uh, there are other ways to make a living. Expert. Yeah, <clears throat> those certainly are better ways. Um, got started as an actor. Um, in time, I segued uh, to the other side of the camera and kind of stayed there. Every now and then I go back to uh, acting, uh, but for the most part, I'm behind the camera, you know, raising money and, uh, putting together projects and uh, both are fun, but um, you know, being a producer allows you to kind of have a little more control um, and still be creative. <clears throat> so that's, uh, that, that's the part I like, um, being able to call the shots and also being able to uh, stay creative. I, I forgot to give a quick shout out for our mutual friend, Beth Rosen for introducing us, so. Yes, thank you, Beth. Thanks to Beth. You've worked with her on a couple projects, I'm guessing? Uh, we've developed some projects together. Uh, we worked on one project uh, that went full swing, uh, which is uh, American Whisper. Um, it's a true story of uh, the murder of an African-American family several years ago. And uh, the husband came home, the father discovered the family. And of course he was a suspect um, and his whole life kind of turned upside down because of the, uh, the event. And we're trying to get the case reopened um, and using the film as a kind of uh, cudgel to, um, to try to reopen the case because it, it, it had never been solved. It's still a cold case. Happened in New Jersey. Oh, wow. Good. Was it Patterson, by the way? Um, no, Teaneck. Um, oh, okay. Close, close enough. Yeah. And, uh, um, wow, fascinating. And, and I applaud you for your noble cause trying to reopen the case. You're trying to you know, move, move the needle on something, you know, li life and death there for somebody. Um, it, now, is that a, a narrative type film or a documentary? It is a um, docudrama, actually. Um, the original uh, gentleman who, uh, who was impacted by this um, had similar type of routines. He was an entrepreneur in uh, Harlem and built uh, about a half dozen uh, successful businesses and um, had himself uh, recorded uh, in his various routines, you know, going to, uh, going to the bank, collecting his rents, things like that. And we took some of that footage and um, we've used it in the film. And uh, which also leads up to the event of the discovery of his family in real time. And uh, it's currently uh, running now on Amazon on Tubi TV and uh, it's had uh, over a million views uh, to date, which is uh, kind of phenomenal for a wow. self-distributed film. Yeah, and uh, and you know, um, a cold case division uh, was formed um, in Bergen County, New Jersey, and we're just trying to uh, nudge them into um, you know doing the right thing. Good for and, you, uh, that, and that has that has happened thanks to uh, filmmakers in the past. You know, yeah, they've they've sure. actually put a lot of pressure to reopen cases and, and look carefully to make sure that one way or the other, justice is at least um, served. So Absolutely. I applaud you for your efforts. And I, I have Amazon, so I will definitely, I look forward to checking that out. <laughs> please, yeah, um, please. So let, let's talk about uh, your role as a producer. Um, if you could just share a few brief stories about how you connected with some of your investors and some of your executive producers, because pe people sure. are always, especially, those just out of film school, maybe working on their first, second, or third film, it's always about how do you raise the money? Sure, sure. And, you know, it's a process uh, that builds over time um, among the people that you meet over the course of your career. It is um, referrals, but by and large, but it's a process that builds um, 
if you're in the game, um, and everyone knows loosely what that term means, if you're in the game, you tend to meet people over time who come back and, um, you know, and assist you and help you and when work with you. And uh, your job as a professional is to kind of telegraph that you're open for business. And it's more of an attitude and not something you necessarily, you know, say or do. Um, it doesn't always happen overnight, but it can. It actually, it can. Um, but it's more of something that you telegraph as a filmmaker over time um, and uh, that, that you're open for business, you have a really hot project and that, you know, over time, months, years, possibly it doesn't happen overnight, but it could, um, people start coming to you. And, uh, and that's kind of how, how it all, I mean, I looked at, you know, the past work and everything when, when you mentioned that question and it, it appears that every investor are tied in some way, but in others, 50%, the other half, um, have no connection to the money. Uh, one has none to the other. And uh, they just came over time for me just uh, doing doing what I do. So you, you mentioned that attitude. I, I agree with that. I think it's extremely important. Um, could you elaborate more? Is this just more about you're just really projecting that you have a really hot project or kind of like when you're out and about kind of sharing with people so that they're at least aware of that and you kind of you're putting out feelers for potential investors yes yes and it's networking and it goes out to um additional people out of your network and comes back to you and of course um the internet offers more opportunity in that kind of uh, framework um than ever before but the best um, tip that I could give is the best one that I ever received. And that it's important to know that 95% of the films that get made and get financed is because 95%, the person who is behind the money had a subjective interest in the topic of your film. And there are genres of, um, of movies that lend themselves to that kind of um, uh, advantage where 95% of the money comes from people who had a subjective interest in your, in your topic, in your genre. And things like, you know, horror, fantasy, science fiction, and then uh, even faith-based at the opposite end of the spectrum tend to carry a core audience, many of whom have access to money, um, who will step in because for no other reason, um, they have a subjective interest in the, um, in the topic uh, of the film. And of course, that even extends to, um, you know, people who are involved in the movie connected in some way to the person with the money. Um, yes, relatives, friends, um, uh, colleagues, you know, that that also applies subjective uh, pull toward getting involved into the film. So um, and I look at the projects that I have done, every single one of them were produced and financed because the person for whatever reason had a personal subjective interest in in what I was doing not, not to put you on the spot and you don't have to mention the names of the specific investors or uh, executive producers but I have them right here just <laughs> but with with one of your films that you're talking about could you kind of give a specific example like for example was there somebody who was a huge John Leguizamo fan and said, oh yeah, I, I want to help back his project. This sounds interesting to me. So mm -hmm. if you can kind of uh, share maybe one or two stories. Okay, I mean, it's, um, it, the dynamics, you know, appear to be different for every project. But when you put a magnifying glass to it, the same thing ultimately occurs, that there was a subjective um, pull into the, uh, into the topic or the person. In the case of the John Leguizamo uh, documentary, that was connection to people. Um, project was a great, terrific project, um, but the money began to um, you know, happen uh, because of uh, the people who were involved. Hey, so-and-so is doing this, so I'm gonna do this too. And why don't you come in because so-and-so is doing this and you know, I'll do it if he does it. And it just, it built on that on it. It was crowdfunded, 
but the build began to happen um, with a collaboration between two companies. Um, one needed something from the other. And I was um, at the time um, the lead producer of, a, of, a, of an organization that was um, uh, casting and putting together creative elements for movies um, as part of what they did as a tech startup. And this was a perfect um, vehicle to um, get the documentary going, a perfect vehicle to get it going in terms of, of feeding it the money it needed. And for the other side, for the other company, a perfect way to establish itself as a, uh, as a tech startup uh, by becoming involved in the film. And uh, clearly the business uh, element is there. I wanna do this film because it'll help me do X, Y, Z or make money for me. But there was something behind the, um, the scene, behind the wings. Uh, a little bit more subtle that had to do with an ad advantageous um, maneuver for two companies by doing this film. And uh, thus it just became um, a, um, a subjective decision uh, to become involved because it would uh, help each side get on the radar uh, for, for their own purposes. And that's how, and, and it sounds like, hey, that's a little esoteric. I don't know what you're really talking about here, but you kind of get the idea. I don't have to explain specifically what it is, what it was. Um, it's enough to know because you'll know it when, you, when, it, when, you ha when it happens, you'll recognize it when two companies come together and they see a mutually beneficial um, project for collaborating on. And it didn't always have to do with making money. It had to do with some other things, mainly um, fulfillment, getting on the radar, promoting your um, product, promoting your, um, uh, your brand. And when this project happened, um, two companies recognized that, that two-way street and they joined forces. And I was affiliated with one of the companies and the rest was uh, history. And, and it involved quite a few people, but in each and every case, it had to do with a benefit that was accruing to each side. And that's how it got made. And you can point to any project that I've done and I could point to the same um, dynamic going let, on. Let, let, let's talk about Tiger real quick. What, were mm -hmm. there a couple of people that were just Mickey Rourke fans or were there one or two investors that just got enthralled with the story and just said, oh my mm -hmm. God, this is an amazing story. I want to help you know, invest yeah. in it? Yeah, um, it was both. And I'll be very, very upfront. One of it was um, coincidentally, if you call it that, a family member who was involved with the project, um, who had another family member who had access um, to, um, to, to the funds, to the initial funds. And when you have uh, initial funds in your project and you can show that uh, there's documents that show that, that the money is there and earmarked uh, for a movie, you can raise more money. It, it happens very, very uh, easily. We have a, um, a culture in our business where everyone says, I have money, I have money. And it kind of you know, rings on deaf ears because yeah. everybody does it. But when you can show documentation, a bank account with funds in that account um, as a percentage of your, of your movie, it becomes very easy to raise the rest because you're showing that you're in business um, already. Someone with the proof vision of funds. Has, has stepped up. Yeah, proof of funds, spread the risk, that whole thing. And that happened because of a, um, a family member being uh, affiliated uh, on a professional level um, with somebody else. So that enabled us to get to that first uh, step. There was a subjective, uh, you know, dynamic going on. And um, once that happened, other things, Mickey Rourke included, became attracted to the project. Uh, but it started with that one, um, you know. Uh, first, first money, first money is always the toughest to money. get. And that's why I always stress, go not, not that, you know, you're never going to get money from a complete stranger that's never heard of you, doesn't know you, but it's easy, always easiest to get the first money, especially from people you know, 
people who trust you, people who like you, family members, associates, colleagues, whatever. Or not, but they have that um, they have that pull toward the subject of the film. It's either or, many yeah. times both. But um, yeah, both yeah. both is the perfect combination. Oh yeah, if, and if they don't know you, um, they have feel a kinship to your subject, to your uh, to your project, and then the rest comes. Then they start to have a kinship with you. But it can begin with a kinship toward the um, what the story is about, and um, and then certainly it builds because Tiger is about a um, an Indian Sikh boxer um, who was banned from fighting because he refused to shave. And uh, he was winning, and so they needed a reason to get rid of him. And they found a convenient one. Um, you know, Beard's cause is a safety hazard when you're in a clinch, so you have to shave or you can't box. Fascinating story. Can't can't wait to see it. That was a convenient way to try to get him, push him out. And you know, of course, a lot of people uh, are attracted to that type of story. Um, not not least of which would be the Indian community. So again, it becomes a subjective kinship toward uh, the subject matter. Yeah, you you mentioned something a few minutes ago about uh, fifty fifty. Were you talking about fifty percent of? I'm I'm trying to figure out what you're saying, and just to clarify, were you talking mm -hmm. about fifty percent of your money coming from people you directly know, and fifty percent from referrals, or uh, people help finding you money? Of all the projects that I've ever done. Uh, roughly half of them um, were connected from a previous project and roughly half of them had absolutely no connection to a previous project. There were brand new, um, you know, money people who, uh, who stepped up. And, um, and that's, of course, very important that um, people who, um, let's call it, you know, buying a product or investing in, in something actually if they have a positive experience are very likely to become involved in a pro in another project again correct if they're, if they're not pissed off or alienated or anything like that they're likely to come back so half of my projects uh, happened on that basis and i'm looking around roughly half came from you know uh, a, a separate entity and then there's other you know dynamics where um, a good portion of the movies that I've done started out as co consultation um, projects. I consult on movies, um, and I, I used to be a teacher on the college level for, uh, for film. And uh, so a lot of those consultations um, built up into full-fledged movies and, uh, as well. So um, that was another dynamic. That, where, where did you uh, teach, by the way? In New York, I taught at um, <clears throat> the new school. I taught a school of visual arts and uh, I taught at uh, City University, Baruch College. Um, oh, awesome. A, yeah. And, uh, and the main uh, crux of the, um, of the coursework was uh, presenting, marketing, promoting uh, your project, uh, assembling pitch decks, that, that kind of thing. And, I, um, and uh, of course, you're going to pull a lot of uh, consulting gigs from that sort of thing but yeah. it also came from referrals you know outside of the uh the teaching and um <clears throat> and then that's another way and it's really the bottom line is uh, actively being out there raising money being in the game uh telegraphing you're open for business and um and and then it just tends to also come to you in terms of of referrals um but it's also pulling in people from all walks of life whether or not um, they're even directly in the movie business um, and letting them know you're open for business because it's not about movies. It's about the money raising the funds. Yeah, and there's no money, there's no movie, that, bottom yeah, line. You're, you're <laughs> reaching out to everybody. You're, you're like a headhunter. Yeah. <laughs> you're reaching yeah. out to everybody to pull in all, all of and the- And it's funds. usually a numbers game. You know, that I tell people the it more is. persistent you are, if you just decide you're not gonna quit sooner or later, as long as you have a good package, you have a good mm -hmm. project sooner or later you should find the money yeah yeah and well, speak, it speaking of which um can you give us a few tips on uh, packaging putting together a project sure Ab absolutely i mean unless you're you're working with a major player and uh, people are surprised at this it's often better to actually just keep the ball in the air and not cement people uh to your project right away unless you really really have to 
because sometimes it does more harm than good, um, especially you know when you find yourself you're going to have to cut somebody loose um, when they thought they were cemented to your project, they were in part of the package, um, and you don't want that kind of reputation. So um, the best packaging really is the material. And if you have terrific material, you'll attract the talent and their representatives um, and the money, which is also, you know, part of, part of the, uh, you know, part of your package itself. Um, but I tend not to early on in a project start to cement people as part of that package because um, you run the risk of it uh, doing more harm than good later on in your travels, you know, of raising money. Mickey Rourke came in among the last, you know, and I think of what would have happened if, um, you know, we had a medium level actor, fairly well known, uh, but couldn't pull in the kind of uh, interest that somebody like Mickey Rourke could do, especially with a boxing film. Uh, it would have been very, very uncomfortable. So we were, we were really, the package was the material and then subsequently the money. And then almost later, almost toward the end, the director and, and Mickey Rourke. And, um, and, and it was mutually kind of uh, uh, mutual admiration between the two, uh, the director and the um, and the actor. So, congratulations it's, on it's that. It's really it's going to start with the material. Yeah, thank you. It's going to start with the material um, first and foremost. And I have a project that that really was not packaged with with name actors at all. Um, and then the others, you know, that that were. But um, you know, packaging is is kind of a delicate um, um, process. And uh, if you have a Tom Cruise type of uh, element in your package, yeah, go for it, cement it as soon as you can. Um, but it's often not, you know, not the best idea to cement in people early in, in the game just to make yourself look good because uh, you, you'll find out later that um, if you did uh, a deal with these people, it's going to be hard to extricate yourself uh, later on if you need, if. Uh, if, if um, your market tells you <laughs> you need another actor. I, so, I understand a hundred percent. And I, I've seen examples where people will, they'll, they'll get a team together with it, with a director, a, a DP. And, 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 and this is, um, it, it's okay on a micro budget, but if you're trying to get a lot of money and you, I've seen people, they have this director and then they have all these, they've already started casting and then the executive producer comes in or somebody big with money and says, no, we want to use this director. Then all of a mm -hmm. sudden you kind of put a roadblock there. Or yeah. if you bring a director on, they're going to want to be involved with the casting. So uh, very, yeah. very wise yeah. words that you said. Oh, clearly, clearly. And, uh, and that, that also extends to uh, partnerships, um, as you alluded to. Um, uh, good, best of luck. Um, but it, it's it's more of a of a roadblock um, having you know uh, three people literally as producers on a deal and going out there and trying to raise money for it. And I know that when I receive uh, proposals with three or four you know producers attached, you know it's like I don't I don't know what to, to I don't know what to say to those individuals, you know. Um, you know, you you bring in other producers. You know, when you're often raising money, and but if there's already you know three to five already attached, it's going to be it can be problematic. Yeah, I, I think it can work only if you're really really flexible and you lay you know everything's very very clear because you just don't want to make sure those two or three other producers have their own agenda. But you know, if it, everything's clear and everyone's flexible. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it can work. So de definitely uh, good, good tips to look out for. Mm -hmm. um, any last minute uh, tips or advice for people that are struggling to raise money for their projects? You certainly shared a lot of great advice. Yeah, I mean, it, it's really the best one, the consistent one that that's affected me, you know, and uh, I've produced films. Um, I've got uh, an assemblage of, you know, documentaries and feature films and I'm, I'm developing a project right now for the learning channel with a group uh, as well um, but we found out we we needed each other in order to make this you know 
um, uh, learning uh, discovery uh, network project happen. And I'm, I'm doing another one with the same thing. The people meet, we've all determined that, hey, we, we need each other's strengths here to make this happen is a project that's going uh, for the e-network. And I can't um, specify what that is right now because it's, uh, but one is a, an approved pilot. We've shot it. And it's, Congratulations. You know, thank you. It's with the TLC people and they're you know giving us notes back and forth and uh we're in the infancy of um of the of the e-network uh, project that we're doing um but in all of these cases whether it's an indie film with no distributor or a network you know uh financed uh project um it really comes down to a subjective interest in either you um or your topic and uh, most of the time uh it's the topic. Well, it, it's a, maybe it's about equal. I don't know. Um, yes, there's a, that element is very strong. Can I make money off of this film? But that's you find out that's very often a subtext. And what's really front and center is uh, the people, you know, and their um, relationship with with the money, or the topic and the topic's relationship w with uh, the person with with the money. This guy loves sci-fi, or he loves horror, or um, you know, he or she loves uh, faith-based films, and knows someone you know in their church who who who's wealthy and wants to put money into faith-based product. You know that that's the where that subjectivity comes in, and um, some of my projects were films that I initiated. Obviously, that's the first thing that comes to mind. But so, some of my films were also, um, you know, on the radar and were given the gift of life by people with money who wanted to see this type of film, you know, get made. And I stepped in and I said, I have the, you know, the ways and means to do it, the management skills, et cetera. And we got the film made, not a film that I initiated, but that somebody else did and, um, and found money for. And, uh, and you know, it's if you have the experience and the professional background to make that film, you know, uh, happen, um, you'll get tapped. And uh, speaking of projects and money, yeah, uh, we got about yeah. one or two minutes left. Are there, is there a project or a couple projects right now that you're looking for money or looking for finishing sure. funds? Yeah. And again, uh, this is a project that I'm I'm developing. It's an aspirational comedy. In the uh, in the tradition of field field of dreams, and it is a beautiful um, project. You laugh, you you cry, and we have partial money on account already for the movie, and uh, and it's we're looking for that final you know thirty percent you know from the film, and it basically deals with uh, a young man who's uh, who's lost um, something in his life that was very important to him, and uh, his wife left him. And uh, one night he discovers um, that his bedroom closet is a portal to heaven, and uh, oh, wow. all the things. And it's a comedy ensuing uh, that that happens. And I've told people um, read to page twenty, and if you are not hooked and intrigued by this project, you can close the script and delete the file. And uh, you that's know, a great pitch, I, right there. Thank you. Oh, yeah. and. Uh, can't say that about script, and you shouldn't say that about scripts if, it, if you don't really um, see that quality, but I do in this one, and I've told my investors exactly that. We do have um, a star that's tentatively attached, um, tentatively meaning I won't discuss that yet, um, but partial money is there. We want to film in Canada in the spring. And what kind and, of money are you looking for? Um, and the budget itself is... Um, is just about two two and a half million dollars not not big for a film uh 2.5 million dollars but a hefty portion has already been raised both hard and soft money and it's called here after all and um it's probably the only project you'll ever read i think where you could laugh so hard and then cry and then laugh again uh it's that kind of film it's to me it's the passion project and uh you know um and it sounds I, and really interesting Invite all comers, yeah. And uh, so, so if any of our millionaire flicks audience is <laughs> listening right now or watching, I should say, uh, what's the best way that they can get in contact with you or follow you? 
Oh, absolutely. It's howard.nash27 at, at gmail. And uh, my dog just saw a cat outside. Um, I'm also on Facebook, Howard Nash. Um, I'm on, follow me on Twitter. Um, and I do consult for writers and producers. Again, half my projects originated that way. But um, the best way, of course, is um, Scott, you can give my uh, contact info out anytime. Um, but uh, also Facebook, Twitter, and uh, howard.nash27 at gmail. Um, you know, uh, feel free to reach out on anything that anyone might be uh, might be doing or uh, or planning. Um, but here, after all, is the one that I'm I'm most busy with uh, right now. So sounds uh, great, Howard. Yeah. We went a little bit over today, but you shared such incredible information for our audience. I really, really appreciate it. Once again, if you want to reach out to Howard directly um, and just read the first 20 pages of a script, you don't like it, you can delete the file. I think that's a great pitch. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. And who knows, maybe one day you, me, and Beth will collaborate thank on a start. project. Have a great day. Thank you. Take care, you too. Thank you. Tune in next week. Or for more info, visit financeyourmovie.com. Thank you for listening. And remember, if you have a story to tell the world, Never give up on your dream. Copyright Nemours Marketing.